Hello everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Maze, and in this video, I'm going to be making this Carver's Mallet. So the last time I used a lathe was in high school woodshop. So this is really my first ever lathe project. And this video is going to be a, about me learning to use the lathe as much as how to make a mallet. So recently I was blessed with a used lathe from a friend of mine. So thank you very much. And even though it's used, it's new to me. And you know that feeling you get when you get a new tool. So I had to make something with it immediately. But it needed to be simple as well as something that would allow me to practice the skills needed to get better at it. So I chose the Carver's Mallet. And the first thing I needed to do was to sketch out an idea of what I wanted it to look like. And I know this looks a little ambitious for my first try. And I know what you're going to say. Not let your imagination run out of control. Well, that's easy for you to say. You have a bad imagination. It's stupid. I live in a fancy world. So with all that out of the way, let's make some dust. So I had this big hunk of maple. So I ripped off two pieces that were as wide as twice the thickness so that it would be square when I glued them together. And these pieces might look way too long, but there was some really bad checking in it. So I cut that out and then made them both the same size. And then I glued them together and I used way too much glue and after it's all said and done, I should have taken the time to plane these and make sure this was a nice joint, but I kind of wasn't expecting it to turn out so well, so I didn't want to spend the time on this joint, and it shows. It's easily seen and probably the biggest disappointment of the build, so don't do things expecting it to fail. Set yourself up for success, and since this mallet will be in my shop for the foreseeable future, I'm going to use this glue joint to remind me of that. So once that was dry, I drew a line from corner to corner to give me a center point and used the compass to draw as big of a circle as I could on my ends. Then I could use that circle to set up my table saw and cut off as much of the corners as I could without touching the circle. And then I was able to put it in my lathe. But before we get started, I just want to say that like all tools in a shop, the lathe is very dangerous. And whenever I'm working around tools, I always keep one rule in mind. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. So all joking aside, be safe out there, people. And as I said earlier, this is my first time using a lathe. So although I think you could learn something from this video, don't use me as your guide for safety. Use the owner manual of your own tools and other more experienced turners for that. So the only lathe tools I have are just the Harbor Freight set. Um, and so I don't really know what they all do at this point. So I'm kind of just experimenting with them. I got the one that's called a roughing gouge out. And I figured it's called a roughing gouge because that's how you're supposed to use it to rough out your circles. But it didn't really work that well. It took forever to get it circular. Even though I even cut it its corners. So it was more of an octagon at the beginning. But I'm kind of just using pencil marks to kind of find out where are my closest to circular areas and kind of trying to get everything even with that and then moving forward to make it a circle and so i finally got it circular so i used my parting tool and i was kind of not really impressed with it i found out all these tools are kind of dull 
and I don't have a bench grinder but I used my belt sander and I was able to get them a lot sharper and so here I'm using the parting tool to try to get it down to size and then play with it a little bit then I get the skew chisel out and play with that a little bit and that works a little bit better at removing material and then I get the spindle gouge out and here I'm having some fun I'm like whoo removing good material making some good dust right here so the technique I kind of developed over this time was to use the spindle gouge to remove material but it leaves kind of gouges in your thing and then you use the skill chisel skew chisel to kind of straighten that out so that it is a lot nicer finish and then you can see I kind of got the hang of it at this point and now I'm working on the taper with the mallet part and I'm doing the same thing using the spindle gouge to kind of remove the material and then using the skew chisel to kind of straighten everything out and here I kind of show how a beginner I am I'm making marks on here that I'll just end up removing before they become important and so right now I'm isolating the, the handle part of it from the rest of the mallet and here I'm actually spending time practicing I'm not going straight to depth I'm kind of going down with the parting tool to a certain depth and then trying different ways of straightening it out I use the skew chisel to kind of remove material and then are the roughing gouge to remove material and use the skew chisel to straighten it out and I use kind of different combinations of the different tools to kind of see what worked best but the spindle gouge to remove material and then the skew chisel to clean it up kind of ended up being the best one. So now I'm bringing everything down to the thickest part of the handle and so I mark it on both ends and then use the spindle gouge and the skew chisel to flatten it out and then I'm going to mark the thickest part of it as well as the thinnest part of it and then set my calipers to the two ends because um, I wanted to kind of have a palm swell I work on the the pommel kind of getting that to size as well and then that's the skinniest part and in my drawing it was a lot thinner I kind of found out from trial and error that for me where my index finger and thumb meet three quarter inches is a comfortable kind of uh, diameter to have right there so that's a lot thicker than it was on my drawing and so I'm kind of trying to make practice different decorations like right here there's a cove I did a bead and kind of did some things where on the transition to kind of just practice some stuff and here I'm trying to make it the palms swell um, I'm not really happy with it at this point but I'll come back on it later but I'm just trying to make it look decent and so I expected the sanding to be able to do a lot more I was expecting to be able to flatten out the handle with actually sanding but um, I, I needed to go back with the with some tools and actually make it better so I shape it a little bit better I'm kind of happy with it now but um, it wasn't good the first time and so I'm basically getting it it's all done now getting it to shape you can kind of see sometimes when I stop at the, the glue line uh, sanded it to 220 and then put some oil on it and then put some wax on it after that and use the saw to cut it off so there's the wax going on you saw the, the line right there I wasn't brave enough to try to part it off so I just parted it off as much as I could and then use the saw so let's rewind it real quick just to see how close I got to my original drawing so this is a pretty cool shot uh, you can see I kind of just thickened everything out because in the drawing 
it would have ended up being too dainty. I don't think it would have worked as a mallet. It might have broken right there. And then I domed off the pommel on the belt sander. And then sanded everything, all the saw marks away and put oil and wax on those parts. And here it is all done. All in all, I think this is a great first project to do on a lathe. It can even be simplified a bit in the design to make it even easier. And you get to practice a lot of beginner techniques. So I'm quite happy with this and plan on using this for a lot of my carving from now on. And that's the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Subscribe for more content like this, ring that bell for notifications, and maybe watch another one of my videos. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my work or some sneak peeks. And stay tuned for my website, which I'm currently building. So thanks for watching, and don't forget, support your local craftsmen, or get out in your workshops and make your own dust. And together, we can make making great again.